The first step is to open GeoGebra. Here we have GeoGebra open. And then we want to see the algebra view. That's this part over here with free objects and dependent objects. We always have the drawing pad open. And for these exercises, we don't want to see the spreadsheet view. So we go to view. We see the algebra view is selected. If it wasn't selected, we would select it. And we see the spreadsheet view is selected. We don't want it, so we deselect it. And so now we have just the algebra view and the drawing pad. The second thing we want to do is to turn on the grid. So we move our cursor over onto the drawing pad in an empty place, right click, and select grid. Now we're going to be working only in the first quadrant. So we go up to the move drawing pad button and click it. And then we click again in an empty place in the first quadrant and click and drag zero, zero towards the corner. We want to be able to have points along here and points along here show up. So don't drag it way down in the corner. This is a pretty good place, zero, zero. And then you can use your mouse scroll button to make it bigger or smaller. Notice that it changed the grid. You can force the grid to be one. That's in a different MathCast. So here we are with the grid at one in both directions. And we have a good place to draw our squares. Now, generally speaking, the option for point capturing called automatic gives you enough control so that if you're close to a grid point, it will go to a grid point. If you want it to force it, then you would click on grid here. We're not going to do that. And the other thing is labeling automatic is a pretty good choice. Sometimes you only want the new points, then you do this. Now the last thing is so that you get this every time you open it, you go to options and you say save settings. Now the next time we open GeoGebra, this will be our setup. So we have set up GeoGebra. Step two coming up. We're going to construct squares that have as their bottom left point, zero, zero, and whose sides are horizontal or vertical line segments so that they're parallel to the axes. So let's start by clicking on the new point tool and making a point down here at zero, zero. Notice that point is black. That means it's fixed. We can't move it. That's because we hit it as an intersection point of the two axes. No problem. That was where we wanted it. Look at its coordinates. A, the coordinates over here in the algebra window show zero, zero, and that's exactly where it is, at zero, zero. Now the first square we're going to construct will have sides three. Let's make the bottom right hand point. So we go over three. One, two, three. So here's where we're going to put our point. And we have moved horizontally three and vertically zero. Horizontal before vertical, H before V. So the point is three, zero. Let's check, click to make our point. Three, zero. And now we want to make a point three up. One, two, three. So here's where we're going to put our point. From zero, zero, we have moved three horizontally to the right and three vertically up. So the coordinates should be, well, as it says there, three, three. So let's click. C is three, three. The last point would be to move left three. One, two, three. So this is where we're going to put our point. Where is that point with respect to zero, zero? Well, this point is nothing horizontally and up three vertically. Horizontal before vertical, so zero horizontal, three vertical. Zero, three is the point D. There we have our four points of our square. And it looks square. So let's see if it is square. We'll click on the polygon tool. Click on the first vertex A, second corner point B, third vertex corner point here, and then back to the first corner point again. And we have a polygon here, and it definitely looks like a perfect square. So let's move these labels out of here so that we can check some other things. We'll put 
V down here. We'll put the sides inside. And now let's look at some things. The little letters here belong to the line segments. They are linear, so they have linear units. How long is A? A is three long. But if I click on this, it says it's the line segment between A and B. So its length is three, but its definition is the segment joining A and B. The same thing for B. It's the line segment joining B and C. Its length is three. These are all of the line segments on the outside of the square. If we add them up, what do we get? The perimeter. 3, 6, 9, 12. So the perimeter of this square is 12. On the other hand, the area of the square is, it's a 3 by 3, so it's 9. We can count the squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. S square units, so 9 square units. So the segments, because they're lines, show the length and the polygon because it's a shape shows the area. Now what else can we do? Let's see if we can move our points and make a square that's four by four. So we still have the move tool. Where would we need to put B to make a square that's four by four? Well, we'd have to move it one to the right so we're not increasing the vertical coordinate, just the horizontal. So it should be four, zero. Now C has to go both one to the right and one up. So both the horizontal and the vertical coordinate will increase by one, so we should get four, four. Let's see, four, four. And then to make it a square, we better move D up, so the vertical coordinate is moving to zero, four. The line segments are now all of four. The perimeter is 16 linear units, and the polygon has an area of 16 square units. Let's check to make sure that all of these angles inside, we know they should be right angles. Let's check to make sure that they are. So we go to the angle tool, click on it, and then anywhere in the square and all of the inside angles should be marked. So click, and we have alpha equals 90, beta equals 90, gamma equals 90, and delta equals 90. So we can see that it really is a square. Not only are all four of the sides equal, but all four of the angles are 90 degrees. Now we certainly can have some fun while we're here and change the shape of this quadrilateral, quadrilateral four-sided figure, which is currently a square. We can, we cannot move A because it's fixed as zero, zero, but we can move B along the X axis. Let's move it to five, let's say. We can make, move C anywhere we want to. Let's say we move it there. And here we have an odd shaped quadrilateral, not even something we know what it is. It's just a quadrilateral, right? But we can check and add up the angles and find out that there's still 360 degrees we can find the perimeter by adding the lengths of the line segments. And we can find the area by looking at poly 1 and by looking at the squares inside. So we can have some fun with that. Of course, you can check this area by noticing that this triangle here has a height of 1 and a base of 3. This triangle here has a height of three and a base of two. And what's left is a square here that's three by three. So we have three by three is nine, and then three by one by one half, which would be one and a half. So we have 10 and a half, and then we have two by three by one half, which would be three. So altogether, 13 and a half. Lots of fun to be had here.